So I want to get to this. I've talked about this before. I did a dispatch on it, but I'll give you guys a little recap of what's going on here. Uh, so the Biden-Harris campaign and everything that they said was lead by science, right? Clearly, Trump was not leading by science. Uh, Trump was leading by his own ego. He was he was leading by his own uh, uh, toupee. You know, that's 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 where he was leading from. And clearly he did not give a, a two shits about what the science was, what the science says, what the science can do to uh, to help the, the, the covid situation. And neither. And, and this is a bipartisan thing. Uh, neither party really gave a shit about any sort of economic uh, economic help for the American populace. All of that's going to come into play here. Right now, the science says uh, that opening schools is a bad idea because then they become the kind of like the central point of uh, community spread, right? Uh, when when they started opening states back up and saying, oh, well, people can get back together because it's the summertime and the numbers are going to go up and this, that, and the third you know, uh, a lot of them were saying like small gatherings were the problem. Restaurants and bars were the problems. And then when the schools started reopening and we saw a surge, they found out that, oh, wait a minute. The schools are are are, are a source of community spread uh, because kids are carriers. They become vectors, right? Uh they kind of keep going back and forth on how much COVID really affects kids or how much it doesn't affect kids. The science keeps kind of going back and forth on that. Uh, kids are not immune from COVID, right? They can still get it and they can still transmit it. Uh, what they're seeing now is that kids that have gotten COVID didn't show any symptoms. And then, you know, two weeks later, we're, we're fine, uh, continue to be asymptomatic, so on and so forth, are getting like other diseases uh, they're calling it misc multi inflammatory oh, man i can't remember exactly what it's called but it's but it's a uh, uh, you know it's a consequence of covid that's what i was looking to say it's a consequence of covid so the kids can get it and then the the consequence is getting this you know this misc syndrome uh which is also causing uh a, you know negative effects on their heart on their blood flow, on their lungs, uh, on other various systems. So regardless of that, opening schools, the science is saying, is too dangerous, but the Biden-Harris administration uh, is adamant about getting the schools open. Uh, and you have Dr. Fauci coming out and saying, yeah, you know, they can be sources of community spread, but oh, but we got to get the schools open. And then the 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 uh, president of the American Federation of Teachers, which is one of the larger teacher unions uh, in the country, Randy Weirgarten, is coming out and saying, yeah, we need to open up the schools. Yeah, we need to get the teachers back to work. We need to get give the parents an opportunity to let them get back to work. Right. So the rank and file, the teachers are saying this is a bad idea. And they went to their unions and they said, hey, we don't feel comfortable with this. I don't want to jeopardize my safety. I don't want to jeopardize the safety of the community. I don't want to jeopardize the safety of the kids. This is a major public health issue. And opening up these schools seems like a really fucking terrible idea. Uh, and the, all of the unions are basically saying, fuck off. We're going to side with the Democratic Party on this. Right. The party that says that it's going to listen to science. And then when the science basically says we can't do that and they go, yeah, well, the economy and science goes, yeah, but we still can't do that. And they go, mm, we're going to do it anyway. We're going to push for it anyway. Now, Randy Weirgarten, the president of the AFT, I mentioned this in the uh, in the oh, multi-system inflammatory syndrome. Thank you, Holly. I just saw that pop up. Uh, Multi-system inflammatory syndrome is what MISC is. That's what's going on with the with the kids. That's the consequence of COVID. Uh, she's siding with Biden because she has to, because she is on the board of the DNC. The l l just kind of gather up what I just said. The president of one of the largest unions in the country is sitting on the board of the Democratic National Committee, which has actively gone after unions and anything that is remotely socialist, right? These people came out and said, we'll never support a candidate uh, that's pro-Medicare for all. Uh, 
uh, no, we're not going to support a UBI. Uh, and now they're saying, hey, we're not, we don't give a shit about science. And they want to reopen schools. And the big thing of reopening schools is getting the parents back to jobs, because if they start getting back to jobs, then, oh, well, then capitalism can come back. Oh, the economy can come back, right? Which, again, there are solutions to get around all of this so that we don't have to have a Sophie's choice between the economy and public health. The science says reopening schools is really, really fucking dangerous and that they shouldn't do it because community spread will start at schools. Community spread starts with kids. That kids are less likely to develop symptoms of COVID if they get COVID, but they are 100% vectors and they will spread shit around the community. The other side of this argument is the parents, right? The parents are at work. A lot of the, a lot of single moms, single dads, uh, have to take care of the kids. They can't go to work. Working from home is really hard during school hours. And I understand the difficulty of that. But let's say uh, you are in a in a multi parent household. You have two. You have two parents. I I don't see why. Uh, a, a company couldn't figure out a, a different work schedule for the parents so that, you know, moms and dads can watch their kids alternatingly, right? Let's say mom watches on Mondays and Wednesdays, dad watches Tuesdays, Thursdays, Friday becomes homework day. Uh, and then the weekend is whatever the weekend is. What's happening with COVID, and this started happening earlier in COVID, a lot of companies were realizing, well, we don't really need people in the office uh, because of the way technology works. We might not need people in the office. Certain jobs just don't fucking um, don't fucking need people in the office so they can do their jobs at home. If they do their jobs at home, they've just saved, what, an hour and a half to two hours in a commute to and from work, and they are far more efficient. I will say that Yes, there are distractions at home, um, but I've been working from home for a very long time. And I will say that when I'm in, like when I have a space that I can work in that's comfortable and very nice, I am far more efficient than I ever was working at some fucking, um, you know, office setting. That might just be me, but I feel like a lot more people are are kind of realizing this. That also means that maybe a 40 hour work week isn't particularly necessary. Maybe a 30 hour work week uh, is a full time job now. And we can start thinking about that, right? Moving forward, maybe people only need to work 30 hours a week, but can still earn a full time income. But that doesn't work well for capitalism. That doesn't work well for profits in a company. You need to have people work more and more for less and less and that's how more that's how a few make a lot more money that it's it's the exploitation of labor there doesn't need to be this sophie's choice between economy and public health there never did right right now we have the science saying uh, schools are not safe there needs to be a lot done in fact it, the, the American Federation of Teachers back in August actually put out a a, uh, a PDF I remember reading uh, that broke down exactly what schools need to do in order to uh, be able to have in-person learning, uh, socially distant with masks and all of that sort of jazz um, to protect teachers, kids, families, communities alike. Part of that was like creating a better ventilation system. Part of that was installing plexiglass. Um, and uh, part of that was extra janitorial staff. Part of that was adjusting the school week and adjusting the school schedule in order to ensure cleaning was po a possibility. And, and a lot of that, what they took was from the Danish model. The Danes figured out how to get kids into school. And then they went out, went out and did it. They spent the money to redo ventilation in schools. They spent the, you know, the, the schools had the funding. They had the amount of money that they needed to get kids back into school to do in-person learning. But they also gave the choice, hey, if your kid doesn't want if they don't feel comfortable, let's say they have asthma, they have some kind of, a, 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 you know, immunocompromised disease, they, they can still learn virtually. We'll set up a camera system. We'll figure out how to, how to run classes you know, well, you know, with with Zoom and and so on and so forth. There is no reason 
why over the course of the summer, if at the end of March schools were, you know, done for the year in 2020, between April and August, there's no reason why the government and the education system couldn't have figured out a reasonable way to teach virtually for the entirety of this year. Instead of being like, well, we'll do virtual for this week and then in person the next two weeks and then virtual for the next 18 days and then virtual for 22 days. And then we'll come back to in person for 12 days at, like that doesn't work. It fucks up the kids. The kids can't get adjusted to something and the teachers can't get adjusted to something. So they're constantly spinning their wheels. And No, standardize the whole thing. Do virtual learning for this year. This year is a wash. That's what I kept saying. 2020 was a wash for a lot of things. There's no reason to try to reopen shit. Figure out how to financially take care of people in your fucking country. So that people can be safe and we can get over this virus a lot sooner. It's the same thing with the fucking vaccine distribution. You had how long to figure this shit out? And I know a lot of people are going to be like, well, uh, you know, let's cut Joe Biden a little bit of credit. He's, he's in, inheriting a shit system. Sure, but he also was in a fucking basement. You don't think he could have met with some folks to come up with a plan? You don't think the Democratic Party could have come up with a plan to distribute the virus, uh, dis virus, distribute the vaccine a little bit more effectively? You don't think the Democratic Party could have come up with a, a, a better plan to help the education system, to help teachers and students and families? The reason why they want people to go back to work is because they are unwilling to do a universal basic income to help the families that need to watch their kids during the school day. Corporations are unwilling to be as flexible as the working classes. Dude, I would have loved to be on the road. Do you, you don't think I would have loved to be on? I had to make adjustments. I did start doing virtual shows. I'm going to continue doing virtual shows. I have started doing more live streams. I'm going to continue doing more live streams. We adjusted, we pivoted, we were flexible, and now it's your fucking turn, especially when the science says that you need to. And the science has been saying that you need to. If Joe Biden is going to sit there and say that I'm going to listen to science, but then say shit like, oh, well, even though the science says that it's not safe to open up schools right now, I'm going to open up schools right now because the economy. Even though I know the science says that fracking and uh, burning fossil fuels and supporting the fossil fuel industry is creating a climate crisis that in, you know, eight to 10 years is going to be irreversible. I'm still going to fucking do that shit. They could have very easily found these solutions. It's a it's a real matter of political will in this situation. And what's really upsetting about all this is that the unions are supporting the party, which is insane. Like I think the fact that uh, Randy Weingarten is sitting on uh, the board of the DNC, she has a seat at the DNC, uh, I'm I'm pretty sure Mother Jones and Eugene Debs are rolling in their graves, right? She's like Mother Jones is is fucking in in the next dimension, just giving the big middle finger to Randy Wiregarden right now because unions are not supposed to they're they're not supposed to play party politics. They're supposed to do what's best for the worker, and this is not best for the worker. The science is dictating it, and teachers are dictating it. There's so much evidence saying that this is a bad idea. And the person that's supposed to be on the side of teachers is bailing on them to support a corporate party when unions are not supposed to be corporatized, right? But the American Federation of Teachers clearly is, is, is a corporatized union. I want to I want to show you guys this. This is just a couple of things that are going on with the schools. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Make sure I can do this properly. So I want to show you guys this. So this is from Left Voice. Guess where? Guess guess what kind of stories they cover? Uh, <laughs> but they say they say the battle for reopening schools has been most acute in Chicago, where the Chicago Teacher Union was in a standoff against the uh, against progressive Mayor Lori Lightfoot. Lori Lightfoot. 
Uh, teachers were supposed to return to work last week, but after an intense battle with the CTU, the school district decreed uh, a cooling off period, showing the strength of the teacher struggle. It seems that a tentative agreement has been reached after the union nearly called a strike. Uh, so the union actually went against the teachers, and I think the teachers formed their own committee. So this is what I covered about two weeks ago. The teachers formed their own committee. They found they formed the Rank and File Safety Committee and pushed back against the union. So what it seems like happened is that the safety committee pushed the union to actually supporting the teacher strike. So the Rank and File had to push the union to support the Rank and File. Uh, Direct action at work right here. Leadership does something that is illogical and puts the uh, the, the 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 safety of, of people at jeopardy. Uh, and the working class comes out, push back, pushes back against them, uh, and uh, and and there they got to win. In Philadelphia, teachers organized a sick out and forced the mayor to call out school openings uh, until arbitration is complete. They're underway right now. Again, direct action in, in, in play. Uh, in Washington, D.C., the district has ad, uh, asked a judge to stop the Washington Teachers Union from engaging in any talks about a potential strike by issuing a temporary restraining order. This, this is uh, they, they started doing that two weeks ago. Uh, the district wants to bring teachers and students back to school buildings for the first time since March. Last November, D.C. organized uh, a sick out which kept schools closed. In California, Governor Gaz Gavin Newsom is arguing that schools should find a way to reopen despite the fact that Los Angeles is now the epicenter of the pandemic in the United States. Newsom proposed to offer a, a $2 billion incentives for reopening elementary schools starting this month. In California, none of the school districts are in the low transmission range. And teachers union in major cities have held off forced reopenings. Uh, so... Again, this is just a few of the few of the story, uh, states that are doing that. Uh, we have New Mexico, where the unions are pushing back against teachers from striking. In Washington D.C., the Washington Teachers Union also, uh, because of that, uh, because there was a, a temporary, the potential of a temporary restraining order present, uh, the WTU basically said, "Hey, we're not discussing strikes." Uh, and then the rank and file formed the safety committee and started pushing for a strike. Chicago was the core. It was the center point of it. Chicago teachers were really against it uh, and were trying to push back against it. Um, and they were, they were clearly, they were successful. Direct action works here, folks. Um, yet we still have, uh, you know, Democrats who chastise people like Ron DeSantis for opening up his state. And now they're doing the same thing. And and look, that's not that long ago. Trump was trying to do the same thing. Trump was also trying to open up schools. And now Biden is trying to reopen schools. That's the similarity between them is that they're capitalists. They don't give a shit about actually helping people. They give a shit about getting the economy rolling again. And I mean, how much more glaring evidence do you really need that the working class is the economy? That if everybody went on strike to say, fuck this, if, if you're trying to reopen schools and get us back to work in unsafe conditions where teachers aren't getting vaccinated, the vaccine rollouts are, are, are slower than ever because of uh, in, inclement weather and poor planning in general, then we're going to go on strike until you realize that what we need is Medicare for all, a universal basic income and safety measures in place uh, uh, to to ensure that, you know, the, it, we're not going to have this fucking Sophie's choice between the economy and public health. And if that happens, the economy, as it were, would collapse. And people and, and I think corporations would truly realize the power of the working class people. I'm gonna look at some comments. Uh reopening schools so parents can get uh work and kids and parents can and can help to spread. Yeah. Uh that's kind of the that's kind of what they're what they're aiming at. They want the people to get back to work because that'll stimulate the economy. It'll make capitalists more money. Uh, kids are lovable little vectors. Yes, they are. Uh, our uh, Red Economics, our schools have been open since last year. They do remote learning if numbers increase. Yeah, I, I just think they should have done remote learning and they should have figured out a, a system to help remote learning. Um, you know, I think we had the time and I think we had the resources to make something like that work. Uh, I have a friend, you know, my my former teacher, who's a friend of mine now, who uh, you know will tune into this sort of stuff sometimes. 
Um, super sweet guy was one of the few teachers that was very encouraging of like critical thinking. And I was talking to him about how frustrating it's been about reopening schools and about virtual teaching and how they're flip-flopping and can't make a decision and everything's on the fly. And for teachers, that's that's in like it's so mind-boggling because it's like they can't really come up with a with a curriculum. They're always changing shit all the time. Like it's not a way that you run the education system because the teachers can't effectively teach and the kids can't effectively learn. Uh, Red Economics says, I have two boys. It's true. Children are discussing cesspools of bacteria on even good days. <laughs> uh, yeah, I get, I get it. Jay, I wonder if they feel like it's safer to open schools by fall because they expect the majority of the population to be vaccinated by then. I would say yes if that was what they were calling for, but the but the Democrats are very much calling for opening up schools now. Like they want to open up schools by March, you know. And uh, I mean, well, before before the teachers started pushing back, they were actually trying to open up schools this month, um, and that's a disaster zone. Uh, I know Biden has come out and said that teachers absolutely need to be vaccinated, and and so is Kamala Harris, but. Here's the problem. We haven't even gotten the vaccination to the primary group who need the vaccination, which is the elderly and essential workers that are currently on the front lines. Right. Healthcare workers, kids, at, like the, the, the folks at grocery stores and um, even I think so, certain places that have bars open should they should get vaccinated and they should be part of that first group. It shouldn't be old people or it should be old people and right. It should be old people and essential workers. And I don't think there was a plan in place, partly because the Trump administration didn't put a plan in place, but also partly because I don't think the Democrats were trying to put a plan in place. I think the Democrats knew that Trump was going to fuck this up. How could you not? He's fucked this up the whole time, right? It's not going to be a miracle that the vaccine comes out and he's like, and now I shall get my shit together, right? Get his fucking shit together comb over in place. They, he didn't do that. You know, like what he did was give them a load of horse shit, which then was added on by another load of horse shit when the weather started to turn and distribution wasn't able to uh you know, they weren't able to distribute the vaccine as effectively as they were. If that was the plan, if that was what they were proposing, then I would say, yes, uh, cool. Let's figure out a way to do that. Continue the remote learning for the rest of this semester. But for the fall by August, let's figure out a plan of what needs to be done to get kids back into the schools, to get teachers what they need, to get all of the schools in the country, uh, you know, the equipment and the upgrades that they need to ensure that it's going to be a safe environment. Because even if after we're vaccinated, we got to, there, there's going to be a period of time where we're still going to need to wear masks and socially distance and be very careful. Uh, just in case, you know, this vaccine is temporary or doesn't take effect the way that they need to. And I understand the rush for the vaccine was, uh, because of the virus and the nature of the virus itself, but it hasn't been fully tested in order to figure out whether it's going to last as long as they need to. I hope that answers your question, Jay. Um, the problem I'm having is that our kids aren't getting an education. They're stuck at home with abusive drug, uh, drug addict parents. They're isolated and get no socialization, exercise, or healthy meals. Yeah, um, that is that is something that I've heard as well. And again, I, I I feel like there could have been a plan in place. The article that I read did point out that, you know, uh, rich people have no problem with any of this stuff because they can hire tutors. They can hire babysitters to watch their kids. You know, um, they can do if you have a larger house and a larger space, you can have a couple of kids over and do socially distant learning at your own at, at your home or or with your with your pods right with your with your safety pods and such but that's not the case for someone that lives in a neighborhood like mine and my neighborhood is not a super rich neighborhood i feel like everybody here uh are are working class people average folks and and i'm looking at the houses and i'm even looking at at, at the house that you know that i live in and i don't think if i had uh kids i could i could house more than two or three at a time um but again if UBI was a thing, 
you know, and we looked at we we restructured how corporations run and decided to say, OK, well, we're going to be compassionate and empathetic and understanding to the plight of parents. And we're not going to punish them for being parents and adjusted the corporate schedule. This would this wouldn't be that big of an issue because by three o'clock they're done. And you can give your kids a snack and let them go play and do whatever they need to do as kids, uh, you know, and you could finish up your work and then go take them to the park or what have you. I mean, right now it's the wintertime in the East Coast and a majority of the country. So I don't know how many people are going to parks anyway, but there could have been a very effective plan put into place. Uh, and and I think that was just a, a matter of uh, the lack of political will to get something like that done. Because I think the expectation was, oh, lock them down for four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, whatever. And, you know, don't provide them with any sort of financial security. And eventually they'll fuck off and the virus will be gone. Well, that didn't happen because, again, you had a lot of protests because when when you say, oh, this is for your safety. But also, I know that you're, you, you know, a lot of people are living paycheck to paycheck and can't afford rent. And we're going to do this for two, three months. That doesn't work because then people go, wait a minute, is it about my safety or is it about just fucking me over financially? And then you lead down the conspiracy theory going, well, if a government is supposed to take care of its people and they're not taking care of its people, maybe all this is a hoax, right? You can very easily lead people down to, to that conspiracy brain. Uh, and then flip flopping between going to school and remote learning, uh, you can't get a uh, you can't get a job, right? Because the parents can't figure that sort of stuff out. The schools can't figure that sort of stuff out. It becomes too chaotic, I think. Um, and I think reducing that amount of chaos is uh, kind of what's uh, what's been the problem here. Uh, cool. Uh, I know you guys left a bunch of comments here. Uh, Biden said, I'm not going to shut down the economy. Yeah, and I think that's that's his primary goal is to get the economy and Wall Street going, right? I mean, look at how quickly... Uh, th there was a turn when ga when all that stuff with GameStop happened. Six hours, Janet Yellen is trying to figure out how to stop uh, stop that kind of trading from going on for 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 poor people, essentially. Um, uh, my governor made uh, a maskless New Year's Eve party with thousands attending. Gavin Newsom had his dinner parties. Nancy Pelosi gets gets a haircut. Uh, it's rules for thee, but not for me. Yeah, I have seen some stuff. Well, and you know what the what the other part of that too is, uh well they're vaccinated. So, you know, they're they're fine. Joe Biden's vaccinated. The teachers are not, a lot of the parents are not. Uh, you know, so it's it's a it's a damn shame. Um because they're not they're not looking at it that way. Uh so they they get they get to live you know what's the what's the old George Carlin saying? It's a big club, and you ain't fucking in it. That's that's basically where it is. All of them got vaccinated, so they can do all this shit. Uh, lots of medical testing at a huge expense to test for misc, mis uh, and no one can afford it. Yeah, uh, most children with misc need to be treated in a hospital. Some treatment in pediatric intensive care unit. Treatment usually involves supportive care and measures to re reduce inflammation in uh, affected vital organs to protect them from permanent da damage. That's what Zosovic says over on Rockfin. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know too much about it. So thank you for providing that information. I do know that they need to go into an, uh, into an ICU because it, it is, it is as serious as COVID. Um, and, and again, you know, this is what we're trying to prevent. It, we're, we're trying to prevent kids from getting this stuff. We're trying to prevent um, kids from, uh, from being put into, you know, in, in, in being put in, into conditions where they might get an irreparable disease, you know, that these kids might have to deal with heart problems for the rest of their lives or lung problems for the rest of their lives. Like they can't just be kids. They have to deal with all this stuff. Um, they're looking at hundreds of thousands of dollars in bills for one kid's treatment. Oh, the insurance companies and the medical companies. Yeah. And again, it comes down to, well, you know, uh, there was a big pharmaceutical company that basically came out and said that we're not in the business to treat sick people. We're in the business to make money. You, they don't want to cure any diseases because there's no money in it. So it's something along those lines. I probably butchered the quote. Uh, Sarah says, funny though, I saw my kid's teacher in a grocery store the other day. She said she didn't want to go back, but uh, she was in a grocery store. This comes down to 
who we considered essential in our society. Teachers are essential. This is why we allocate tax-funded resources to this service. Uh, I agree, although uh, I would I would ask if she was in a grocery store wearing a mask because I've definitely had to go into, into grocery stores as well. Um, you know, I, I try not to use Instant... Like, we were using Instacart uh, when the numbers were spiking a whole lot and we work with this elderly lady, but... And now, you know, it is expensive. Those those fees get expensive, you know, and and we 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 couldn't afford an additional, you know, eight to ten dollars uh, of uh, on our grocery orders. So we have gone to grocery stores, but we wear the masks and we, you know, try to stay distant from people and we're we're in and out of there quickly. So that would be my only question in regards to that, uh, you know, and, and I bet she was. I would also wager to to bet that she wasn't comfortable being in the grocery store and was just trying to get the get in, get her shit, and get out. Um, but I do agree that teachers are essential. Uh, you know, we need our kids to learn, and hopefully, they're good teachers that teach critical thinking and 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 I understand the curriculum and so on and so forth. But encouraging critical thinking is a good thing, and I hope that these teachers are doing that. Uh, Zizovic says, sounds like propaganda to me to push kids back to school unsafely. This talk about kids stuck at home with abusive parents. Uh, what about the kids stuck at home uh, have the time of their lives with parents for the first time in their lives? Yeah, I, I, I think both should be taken into account. I know that kids have to deal with abusive parents. I know that there was a that was a problem with relationships in the beginning of the pandemic. Um, and again, there are solutions to that. And that is the job of a government to figure that out, especially in uh, conditions like this. Uh, there should be, Sarah says, real concern about the psychological impact on the child. Children without access to safe spaces, those are the real concern voices by doctors and specialists. Uh, agreed. Uh, you know, I do think that we need to figure out, like NBC is doing this psychological impact news story. And, and it's nice, but it's kind of a fluffy piece. Uh, rather than really talking about how depression affects kids, how anxiety affects kids. And a lot of it, you know, they're talking, the, one of the kids was talking about how they're at school and then they got to do homework and then they don't really get time uh, for themselves. Um, and and that makes me think that what this is really revealing is, you know, how do we give kids the time to be uh, creative and the time to have recreation, to be with their friends and not have this overwhelming pressure from the education system. Um, you know, and that comes down to rethinking education in and of itself. And again, much like the jobs that maybe we need a 30 hour work week instead of a 40 hour work week. It's kind of bringing up the questions of how to, how to really fundamentally change the system. Um, and that's part of the questions that they don't want to answer because that's scary to them. So you know that is that is a a, a thing that I I don't think uh, they're willing to respond to right now. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button, hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook, especially Facebook and YouTube. They often uncensor pe uh, un unsubscribe people and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, uh, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A dot -H -H com. There you'll find past episodes of, uh, of various shows that I, uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows the forkful of noodles live virtual comedy shows uh the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website but if you're also on financial stable ground you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member which gets you free tickets and bonus content and go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate 
to to make any kind of financial contributions. But if you can't, it's not a necessity. Most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. And I hope to see you at the next video.